Hi, I'm Manny Vacchiano with BioPharm IQ, and today I want to talk to you about how to pick and analyze BioPharma catalyst events. We'll start our session today by looking at how to identify events that are of interest to you. Then we'll talk about how to find information about those events. Next, we'll look at how to analyze that information to try to predict what is the chance of success that a clinical asset is going to successfully progress from one phase to the next, for example. It's going to pass. And then finally, we'll look at the resources and the information that is available on bpiq.com that will help you find and analyze these events. So how do, I, how do you identify an event that is of interest to you that you can use to help make potential trading decisions? Well, one question you have to ask yourself is what is your risk tolerance? Now let's be honest about this. These are biopharma companies, micro cap through mid cap. So these are all risky. So this is not for the faint of heart, but that's what makes it exciting. I mean, there are not only these potential companies with a lot of up and downside, there are these mover events that can really move the companies, which makes it really interesting to invest in. But you have to look at how high is my risk tolerance? Do I want to trade across these big mover events or do I want to avoid the big mover events? Furthermore, as a general rule, when we have a micro cap company, we're looking at a much riskier investment than, for example, a mid cap company. And we've got information about all of these on our website. So the size of the company also uh, you should look at when considering which events you want to look into. Next, what's your investment strategy? If you're trading stocks, no options, then you're looking for an upward movement in the stock and you're looking to buy and sell the stock across an upward movement. If you're selling options or shorting the stock, then you will potentially make money if the stock price goes down and that might change how you invest in which events you invest in or avoid. Finally, you should look at what interests you because this takes work to analyze these events and it should be interesting to you. For example, you might be interested in a particular disease because of some experiences in your life. Like you might be interested in diabetes or you may have already done some analysis of a company or their asset in a particular indication or disease and therefore it's a good place to find another asset because you're already familiar with that disease state. And as I've mentioned in another session, as we look at clinical trials and as we progress through higher phases and more rich report outs within these trials, we get these big mover events. At least that's what we predict in advance many times and you never know, it could be a mixed result. So it could be a big mover event but there could be a primary endpoint that was, mess, uh, that was missed, but secondaries were hit. There could be mixed results, so it still doesn't move a lot. But it's in advance, many, many times we can have a pretty good idea that this looks like a big mover event that will move the stock at least 25% up or down. And so if we look at these companies over time, and here's an example of a company, Arenia, we see, for example, in Arenia, it sat around you know, five, six dollars a share for some years. But then there was a big report out, I believe it was a lupus report out in late 2019 when the stock price went up considerably, hundreds of percents I believe. And then over time when we had the pandemic hit, the stock price went down more than 25%, recovered back, several moves in between and then recently it was approved by the FDA, this, this drug candidate for Arenia and the stock price went up by more than 25%. This is a typical way these biopharma stocks can move. I mean, this was a great success if you were holding the stock in a bullish way late in 2019. If we look at another company, here's Cardiff. It's a shorter time frame. If we look over the last year, Cardiff stock price had a great year in terms of appreciation. And you'll see there were several times you know, over the period of days or weeks when the stock price moved up or down across various events. Recently, Cardiff reported out I think it was interim 
results from a prostate cancer drug and the stock went down by more than 25%. But again, this is what we see for these biopharm companies. They'll go up, they'll go down, especially around catalyst events, many of which are fairly predictable that the company stock price will move considerably across the event. So that's what makes it fun, really. We have these big moves up and down around the events. And so when we pick events that we want to look at more carefully and that are of interest to us, how do we find information about those events? Well, that's on the next slide. In general, we find information from the companies who sponsor these trials, who own these assets. And they'll provide information in SEC filings, in posters and oral presentations at biomedical meetings or publications in peer-reviewed journals. There are typically press releases with some information or that connect us to deeper information of any of these other sources. And there are investor calls and slide decks that provide us even more information. It's important to keep in mind that most of the information we get about an asset is coming from the company that owns it. So the information will be biased from a positive point of view. You've got to keep that in mind. You're seeing the glass half full side of the story. It's ethical. It's okay. You just have to be aware of that. When I'm starting analysis of a company, I'll first look at the BPIQ Catalyst Calendar, which is a nice searchable, filterable calendar to identify catalyst events that are of interest to me for the reasons that I mentioned in the prior slides. And then I'll use our company page to get an idea of how important that asset might be to the company. And I'll use our drug indication cards to get more uh, information about the mechanism of action, about various readouts of that trial with links to the, with, to the trial, uh, clinicaltrials.gov uh, entry or different readouts from the trial which will take me to going to information that is coming from the company's website. An important place early in the analysis that I typically go is to the monthly corporate deck for the company uh, who owns this asset, the sponsoring company, because almost every month these companies, they present some updates at investor calls or various different avenues, and therefore they provide an updated corporate slide deck. So I'll look at the corporate slide deck for this particular asset, what it says about this asset, to get an overview. Does the company even mention the asset? Is it just in a minor footnote or something? That tells me, okay, this isn't that important to this company. This event probably won't move the stock price too much. Or is are half the slides in the company deck about this particular asset? And then I'll look at prior readouts from this particular clinical trial or other earlier clinical trials for this asset. I'll look for quarterly updates that the company provides. Again, how much detail, how much, what information do they provide about this upcoming catalyst, for example. And then I'll look at their posters, oral presentations, if there's peer-reviewed uh, publications about this particular asset, that's really great. I like to look at those to get a better idea, especially if they relate to clinical trials. And if I want even deeper information about, for example, maybe this is a licensed asset and I'm trying to understand what is the royalty rate that this company's paying for uh, in the future on any sales for this asset, I'll take a look at the SEC filings to get information about that, for example. So this is where we get information about the asset. Again, most of it comes from the company itself. But then how do we analyze this information to try to better predict, will this be a positive event for the company? In general, I find that the most helpful and useful information about assessing the probability of success is prior data, especially prior clinical data about this particular asset. Furthermore, we can look at how the particular trial or the particular readout compares to this prior, uh, prior data, or how does the current trial design compare to the prior trial design? Is it the same subjects? Are they the same level, state of disease progression as the prior design? Is this now a phase three trial that's a worldwide trial with 100 sites and the phase two was at one or two 
uh, highly regarded academic sites. That can make a big difference in terms of how much potential risk we have in this current uh, readout. Is it the same endpoints? Was it successfully hit last time? What cherry picking was done in the prior readouts? There's almost always the situation where we have this intent to treat population, we call it ITT, and during the trial, some of the patients don't show up for future visits. Various things happen and they pull out. And so we sometimes, many times we'll get an analysis that's not the full trial participants. Um, and, and therefore we have to kind of assess how does that affect this current trial? And what does it mean about the likelihood of success about, of the current trial? And then in addition to prior data, clinical data of the current asset, we will look at clinical data of a, the control arm of the study. Maybe we already have a peer review journal with data on the control arm from a very similar study. Sure, cross trial comparisons, you gotta be careful, but many times that's the best we have. There's also the standard of care for the current disease or the current indication. And it's great to see how the standard of care performed in its prior trials. And that helps us understand what will success, what will the market see as success? Because sometimes a drug will pass technically the primary endpoint, let's say, but if it didn't do well enough to really substantially improve on the standard of care, then the market may not see that as too positive of a result because it may mean that the company's gonna have a lot of trouble trying to sell this asset in a marketplace that has the standard of care already approved. And we'll look at drugs with the same mechanism of action and their prior data. We'll look at drugs and trials within that particular indication area. All of these things coming together to compare and try to assess what is the probability of success. And typically we'll make comparative tables and other comparative graphics uh, so next slide, I give you an example of a comparative table we provided for a company called Apto and one of its kinase inhibitors. And we looked at other kinase inhibitors and the trials that they ran. And we have various comparisons there. And in fact, I give you a bit.ly link if you want to look at that entire table compar comparing those assets. Have a, have a look at that. And sometimes we'll look at, for example, this was the same drug. It was a kinase inhibitor. And these are these graphics of uh, kinase profiles and it's helpful to look across those when comparing different kinase inhibitors and you know this is pretty technical these profiles are pretty easy to read because they're pictures and you can kind of compare uh, the bubbles and the pictures but sometimes if it's too technical you may decide um, you know this is not a great asset for me because this one gets a little too technical you don't have to be a biotech PhD at all to invest successfully in this space or even understand these trials, but it does take some experience and looking at these and, and seeing what happens in various results after you do some analysis to get the hang of this. And nobody predicts this right all the time, nobody. There's a lot of failures, there's a lot of surprises, this is the way it goes. Uh, but there's a lot of great information that it can help you analyze a particular event and a particular asset. And at bpiq.com, we provide you helpful resources and information uh, for your analysis in, in, in order for you to be able to find these key events for you through the Catalyst Calendar, which is searchable, filterable, an easy way to find good events to dig into. Uh, we have company pages which help, which help you understand in this perspective in the, of the entire portfolio of assets for a company, how important is this one. We have our drug indication cards which get deeper information on this drug and the indication, mechanism of action, information about the history of the drug. We have a big mover events section to make it easier for you to identify by at least seeing what we think will be big mover events. We provide educational information like this video to make you better investors, more educated about biopharma analysis. And finally, we have a social and forum section where you can see what other analysts think about a particular readout, a particular company, help you to assess it for yourself. That's what I want to say today about finding and analyzing Catalyst events. I hope you found this helpful. We plan to provide more information and more examples to our subscribers. So help, hopefully you'll go to bpiq.com and give us a try. In the meantime, I hope you're making a lot of money investing in biopharma companies. Good luck.